Hi. All you have to do is to change the boot role there of the EE prom. And after that, you will be able to boot directly from the NVMe drive. To make it work, you have to power on your Raspberry Pi, uh, the CM4 board actually, and then log in to the SSH to the Raspberry Pi OS, or eventually you can connect the keyboard to your CM4 board and just type in the command line the command that I'm going to present. I am currently logged into the CM4 Raspberry Pi OS through the SSH. Let's see the configuration in the command line rpi eeprom config. You can see the line boot order. Then you can just copy the line and paste it to your notepad or some text editor. And after that, just power off the operating system on CM4 board. There is a good tutorial on the Raspberry Pi official website. See the section Compute Module for Bootloader. In this section, you have everything what you need to be able to proceed with the actually bootloader and changing the correct uh, order uh, to make it work and boot from the NVMe drive. The table explains better the correct order. So in this case, it should be something like the NVMe should start first, as first, should be set as first, then SD card, USB, USB CM4, network, and reboot. So what you need to do, actually, you need to change the configuration uh, by reading from the end. So the first will be six, then one, then four, then five, then two, then S, then X, and then zero. So it should look like boot order equals zero X F two, five, four, one, six. Logging into the computer with Linux from which you were flashing earlier EEMC drive. In my case, it was my Dell laptop. Here you can see that you have to use the recovery directory inside the USB software that allows flashing the EEPROM. You have to change the line in the file boot.conf. So I'm changing the configuration. Vim boot.conf. You have to change the order according to the explanation that I provided previously. And here I'm changing these values to the correct order. Connect the USB, micro USB cable between the computer from which you will flash EEPROM and a powered off CM4 board. Then plug power cord into the CM4 board. Run the below command inside USB recovery directory. sudo dot slash update dash p -e -e -prom dot sh. Please remember to connect the jumper or female to female cable to block EMMC boot. Okay? I should update the p -e -prom. And you can see it done. So what you need to do now, you need to find out one simple thing that after that, 
when you updated the p app from bin image file and with the compute module 4 plugged into the computer into my dell in this case with the disabled emmc boot using the jumper set or, or the email to email cable you need to run rpi boot and it should load the new pi from boot so um we will try to do that and if i will go up you can see there is rpi boot file so sudo and rpi boot command one more time and this time it will flush the dm4 lovely and it's done so now the boot order is changed and after that you will have to figure it out how to clone the storage into the nvme boot up now the cm4 board so you should unplug the usb to micro usb and then unplug the power from the cm4 board do not forget about unplugging the jumper or female to female cable okay and then plug it once again and check if it's booting up and it should uh, let's blk and blk id and lovely you can see it's a root partition boot partition and this is a disk this is our emmc drive and here uh you skip this because you don't need to and here we have our nvme drive so what you need to do actually you should just use the dd command to copy the content so sudo dd if equals dev now uh mmc blk zero exactly and off the off file equals slash dev but this time it will be nvme drive zero uh nvme zero n one like that and bs equals four megabytes or mb and status equals progress uh this yeah and now what you are going to do you are copying the mmcbl key disk this emmc storage into the nvme and you need to hit enter and it should show you the progress Okay, so now we can see it's done. So uh, we will see the status uh, LS um, BLK, and you should see now how it changed. You see, we have an VME 0N1, it's a disk, and we can see a uh, what partition boot 256 megabyte and the partition um 28 giga pseudo f this and dash l and we will use this one this is the mvme yeah nvme drive so we will try to sudo f disk dev like that and print the partition table and you can see the difference and I will quit now.
and now what I want to do, I want to use the, and I want to use this to find out if this and sudo f this and print the partition table and m for the help and create a new empty blah 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 and delete the partition change this right okay so we will delete the partition and the default to and then delete the partition create just a new partition so just without changing anything new uh new partition and it will be a primary and the default will be one and the size will be the whole and print the partition table and you can see yes and save the result uh okay and reboot just like that and we should see the start of the screen um i thought that we will have to change everything um change fs tab and change the pmd line but it is not dd did the job correctly and set the same partition label and UX. so everything is working correctly now and ls blk and you can see we have uh, only one like that and you can see now nvme is set as boot and yeah and this is correct and what is next step next step is to extend the partition to sudo rfp config file ah lovely and run the option update Okay, so you can see it's working. Sleep five seconds, reloading Raspi config. Okay. And advanced option. And you can see expand file system. And select root partition has been resized. File system will be enlarged upon the next reboot. So and finish it. Yes, and I'm trying to reboot now one more time. And now I should be able to see the status. Just because it should extend the drive, I see it already did it and rebooted twice. Um, just because it is booting up, it is resizing the, the root file system. Should be able. I hope. Okay, one more time. Ah, now the password is correct. D F K T H. Now and you should see the size of the uh, root file system. Dev root is nine hundred seventeen gigabytes. Nine hundred seventeen. Okay, so this is correct. And L S blk cut etc fs tab and you can see part u it boot and it the same so uh, blkd and you can see now nvme drive only contains the proper dd just copied partition u it for boot and for the root file system so dd is doing the job and you don't have to do anything besides one thing cleaning up even before the reboot you run the dd and then you can use fdisk to just clean up the emmc storage and after that when you will reboot it will work like a charm so this is something that you need to understand so that's the way we can do this and it extended so lovely and there is nothing more than this you need to and eventually after that, what you can do, sudo apt update and lovely and sudo apt, I'm not, uh, yeah, list upgradable, I will not upgrade, uh, but it's good to list everything and you can see 
there is EEPROM version, uh, newer version. So, sudo apt upgrade and dash y and it should work. Confirm for you everything is put up now. And lovely, it's downloading all the packages as I expected, and it is doing the right thing. So, what you have to do? Summarize. In the beginning, you need to check the EEPROM configuration. Then you need a tool, USB boot. And in the recovery directory, there is a boot.conf file where you can modify the boot order. And then you need to reflash the EEPROM to make those changes permanent and set NVMe drive as a first one. If you will boot up the operating system, it still boots from the EMMC drive. That is okay. And then you need to use a DD to clone the content of the EMMC drive to your NVMe drive. And you just need a FDisk or Gparted tools to delete partitions from the EMMC drive, create a new partition on that drive, and save those changes. After that, when you will do this, you need to reboot once again the operating system. And you will see that the system is properly booting up and it is up and running. And then you can perform a check to see the content of the uh, actually partition setup and using um, lsblk command to see uh, is there uh, one partition only on the EMMC drive and on the NVMe drive that you can see boot and root file system uh, partition. So, um, then you will be sure that everything is done correctly. And eventually, if you wish to, you can add to fstab an entry for the partition from EMMC drive. So what you actually need to do, you need to use the blkid command to check the partition UID of the uh, MM EMMC drive, and, and then you need to add a proper entry into your fstab. I didn't present it because I think that this is quite easy, so you just need to follow the existing entries and you need to just do exactly the same only by changing the partition unit. Please remember about the file system. So you need to check if it ext4 or ext3 or xfs or something else or btrfs. So you need to exactly set the same file system in your fs tab. Thank you very much and have a nice day or night. Take care. Bye bye.